Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. All right, we are back with Kathleen here for another NFP in Real Life episode. Yay. It's been, First, yeah, it's been, it's been a while since we recorded an episode together. And like, y'all are going to be listening to this, like, and you'll be like, I just listened to Kathleen and Ellen two weeks ago. <laughs> They're not going to understand. Not that yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's been months. It's been since I think the first week of June since we recorded. No, has it been that? I thought, wow. Yeah. Oh my yeah, gosh. I, I was thinking it was long. like the start of July. No, it was June. Um, yeah. Cause I went to the given conference. That's right. And then we saw each other. We met, we met in IRL. person. <laughs> if y'all didn't see that on Instagram. <laughs> All right. So we're starting off strong with strong. recording episodes again. And yeah. what we're talking about guys is something that is uncomfortable to talk about, especially in today's society and today's culture. And we're going to be talking about the fact that marriage is ordered to the procreation of children. Wait, what? What? Is that true? That's not true. That is true. Wow. Let's pull up some some canon law, friends. We'll oh, start we there. Go. We'll start there. All right. So for matrimonial consent to exist, this is canon law 1096. Um, the contracting parties must at l- be at least not ignorant. I love that phrase. They must at least be not ignorant of these, <laughs> good. of these two facts that marriage is a permanent partnership between a man and a woman. And it is ordered to the procreation of offspring by means of some sexual cooperation. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Guys, this means and I'll, we'll pull up some more canon law in a little bit because I dove in to canon law yesterday. You did. You were like real excited about canon law yesterday. That's I was. I emailed. I emailed Kathleen this like list of like I got lots of canon of law in my email yesterday. Articles from canon <laughs> law. All right. So guys, what this means is that in order to be married in the Catholic Church. You have to have the ability to have sex. Mm -hmm. That's what the sexual cooperation means. Yeah. So um, this is canon law 1084. Um, Perpetual impotence to have intercourse, whether on the part of the man or the woman, whether absolute or relative, nullifies marriage by its very nature because the nature of marriage is ordered to procreation. Now that does not mean that every marriage has to like procreate children. Right. We see that in couples who face infertility and we are not here trying to be insensitive to any of you who are listening that, um, that struggle with that, with either permanent or, you know, temporary infertility. But we are here to talk about a very important point that marriage is in fact, by its very nature, ordered to procreation. And this has been said, this has been like confirmed by like every single Pope. I pulled up the last like five, I think I have quotes from the last five. Yeah. But or maybe just the last four. I don't, we'll see who I have <laughs> on my document. <laughs> but, but everybody's confirming it because if you look at the nature of marriage, naturally, in order to consummate the marriage, the marriage, you know, a, a man and woman have to have sex in order for the marriage to be consummated. Yeah. Um, and if the marriage is not consummated, it's not invalid because the validity of the marriage comes from the ability to have sex. It's um, it, if a marriage is not 
uh, consummated. It's called Radam Tantum. And I'm sure that's pronounced differently because <laughs> I don't speak Latin. Um, but it's not that it's invalid. Okay. And non-consummated marriages, like there's so, so many questions about this. And like, I'm not a canon lawyer, like that this would be something to like possibly bring up with your parish priest if you have like additional questions on this. But I know this question always comes up whenever I mention to someone about like consummated marriages versus not consummated marriages and indissolubility and blah, blah, blah is Josephite marriages. Let me explain Josephite marriages. <laughs> you have to, at absolute minimum, have permission from your bishop yeah. in order to practice a Josephite marriage. You can't just get married and say, oh, we're going to have a Josephite marriage. No. Actually, wasn't it, um, I believe, Louis and Zélie Martin, beloved parents. Of oh, yeah, they friends, wanted to. They wanted a Josephite marriage and went to their bishop and their bishop would not grant them that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, That's right. Yeah. He was like, nope, that's not what marriage is for. Like Josephite marriage is not, it's not like the goal of marriage, right? What, right. what Mary and Joseph's marriage did was it united the marriage of the lamb and marriage here on earth. And it built this like beautiful bridge between it. Um, and, and what happened in that marriage was, was so beyond our human experience it's not something that we need to be like attaining toward right right <laughs> like, right yeah um it's a pretty in unique a, in a calling physical sense right like we should be attaining toward it in a in a metaphysical sense yes <laughs> yeah no i think that makes sense yeah um, um yeah what are your thoughts what do you have well I, you know when i first learned that that was um that that was like canon was um, when I was watching Downton Abbey years ago. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know if there's anybody out there like catching up on Downton Abbey. So spoiler alert, if there is, although I won't use names, but two characters were engaged to be married and one of them ended up getting injured in the war and paralyzed from the waist down. Um, and once he realized he was, he was paralyzed, he broke off the engagement because he said like, I cannot, I can't be married to you now. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I think I like went to my husband about it and I was like, wait, why can he not get married? Because he's paralyzed. He was like, because he can't have sex. I was like, because he cannot perform right? a marital act. Exactly. But like, and the fact that it was on like mainstream television like that, I was like, wow, this was like a thing that was known and followed back in the twenties. Like this Mm -hmm. was, this was a cultural norm at that point. Right. And now it's like, well, anyone can marry anyone for any reason. Right. Um, so it's less understood. It's less understood. It's less, um, but it makes, I mean, when you really do sit down to think about it, it makes total sense. I mean, is it heartbreaking? Like if that were the case, right. (laughs) Like somebody, um, who was maybe paralyzed, right. Or like could not perform, the sexual act for some reason, I mean, it's, it would be like a cross they would have to carry, you know? Um, but it's, it's so interesting to really think back and like, yeah, what is the purpose of marriage? Right. Um, and you know, there's all these other side things like, you know, it's a cure for loneliness and, you know, like all these other things we might think, but really it's not like the purpose of marriage is for the procreation of children, because all of those other things we should be finding in Christ first. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting point to think about, but like you said, it's not probably not going to be popular and, uh, in 2022 versus 1922, (laughs) we think very differently. And let's, let's just like quickly define one thing further. Um, the difference between impotence and sterility. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, I read that quote from Canon law about impotence. Um, and that is the inability to perform the marital act. So someone who is paralyzed from the waist down, someone who has their male member cut off, um, right. Someone, uh, I don't know what it would be on the woman's side, but well, I mean, if she was paralyzed from the waist down, right. But if the the, legitimate inability 
to have intercourse sterility. And this is like just a little bit further on in, in the same Canon, I think 1084 still, um, sterility, neither prohibits nor nullifies marriage without prejudice, uh, prejudice to the prescript oh, of Canon 1098. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> 1098 is a person <laughs> contracts invalidly who enters into marriage deceived by malice, right? So, so sterility does not prohibit or nullify marriage unless you know you're sterile and you didn't tell. Right. You're betrothed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> that um, would be, yeah, that would be something else, but yeah. And I think, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to expound on that just a little bit. Like, yeah. like the inability to have children is not does not invalidate a marriage in any way. Right. But, and this is what, this is what like all of the popes, even like Pope Francis, who was saying, Hey guys, we got to stop focusing on procreation quite so much. Unity of persons is really important. But what does he say in Amoris Laetitiae? He hearkens back. He says, nonetheless, the conjugal union is ordered to the procreation by its very nature. Right. Mm -hmm. So we cannot forget this concept that the procreation of children is the, is where, let's see, Gaudiamet Spes is, I think where it says where it finds its ultimate crown. Yeah. This is yeah. Gaudiamet Spes. By their very nature, the interest, institution of matrimony itself and conjugal love are ordained for the procreation and education of children and find in them their ultimate crown, Right creation Mm -hmm. is what God loves to do the most. Like he loves to create and he gave us humans the ability to be cooperators with him. I don't even know if that's the right word, but y'all know what I mean. (laughs) Oh, I'm on y'all today. (laughs) Um, In cooperation. cooperation. Co-creators. Yes. Yes, Thank you. Thank you for these words. (laughs) These are much better, right? God gave us this ability to cooperate with him in the procreation of children through the marital act. Yeah. That's huge. Right. Now I want to like take a slight turn if we can, because I was, I was telling Ellen that I was thinking about this. Well, I was, I was in adoration the other week and you know, I'm in a point right now where I'm two months postpartum. Right. So, um, you know, not really wanting to be pregnant, (laughs) not really wanting to be pregnant. Right. (laughs) Like emergency C-section sometimes does that to you. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. (laughs) Makes you wonder if you could ever do it again. Um, but you know, it's, so I'm back like after nine months of not having to chart, not having to worry about anything. Right. Like now here I am having to make all my observations again and, you know, do all the thing and making sure you're reading it right. And like psyching yourself out. Um, and so when I was in adoration the other week, I was just kind of laying all of that before the Lord. And I was just like, you know, I, I know, like I, I say it all the time to people that sometimes your marriage needs intimacy more than you need to not get pregnant. Right. Yeah. I love, I love that you, that you say that because I say it all the time to people. Yeah. And we could dive into a full episode on just that. Right. But it's like something that I also need to constantly be reminding myself of and that when I do remind myself of it, I struggle with it. Right. So, and, and that's, I think why I kind of have it on repeat and I sound like a broken record because I need it more than like other people. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but as I was sitting there, um, kind of laying it all before the Lord, I, I got this word that, that I will only give you what you need for your unique and personal sanctification. Mm. And I kind of like, let that repeat in my mind a couple times, right? Because we can talk about marriage and, or, and, and sex and everything being ordered towards procreation, but that doesn't mean we want to procreate every time we have sex. Right. So, um, it's like, how, where is the balance between those two? And, you know, we obviously have natural planning planning. We have, you know, the ability to chart and to monitor and to know our fertility, which is such a gift, but you also need to remember as well that like, you're not totally in charge. Like you can't be using it with this selfish mentality where it's like, you know, um, 
you just never, ever, ever want to get pregnant, right? Like there are times where we need to lay it down for the sake of our spouse, where we need to lay our needs, our, our wants, not our needs, but our wants down because Christ is asking us to, right? Um, so going back to this word of like, I will only give you what you need for your unique and personal sanctification. Maybe you need to be made holy through the sacrifice of bringing another baby into the world. Yeah. But maybe... God needs to make you holy through the service to the children that you already have or to the family that you already have for, for one reason or another, or maybe you need to be made holy through the struggle of infertility, right? Whether it be for life or just for a season. Um, but the idea that we are all completely unique souls with completely unique plans given to us by God, you know, it's like, we can sort of enter into those times with total confidence, right? That, you know what, if I don't really want to get pregnant right now, but if I do, it's because that's what I need to be made holy. I'm going to trust that God is giving me this baby because this baby is what I need to be sanctified. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if we don't get pregnant, it's maybe because God's asking you to be made holy through something else right now, through, Mm -hmm. through a different space. Right. And Continuing to mull it over, I was realizing that this point of view can really also help to answer the question of why God would allow many unplanned pregnancies, especially like premarital ones. You know, I mean, I had a friend I remember in high school who ended up, you know, um, pregnant. And I remember ask, like thinking like, why Lord, like, why would you do this? to this person, like, right. Like, why would you allow this in such, like, it's not a good situation with like, you know, and it's like, maybe I could have answered that by hearing because this is what they need to be made holy, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like, and it was really, it was just a striking conversation I had with the Lord that it was just, Oh my gosh. Hey, you know what this is making me think of? Tell me seen the Netflix movie. Look both ways. No, but I looked it up last night because I saw it in your story and (laughs) you and someone else were posting about it. And I was like, I think I need to watch this guys. You should watch this video. I'm like, I'm not saying that it's perfect because it's mainstream media, but it's, it is really good. It's really good. Yeah. Um, it's real. It's profound. But like, oh man, this whole like concept of like, you know, an unplanned pregnancy and it being like what they need for their personal sanctification. Like it made me think of the parent's reaction to Mm. the girl when she came home and was like, I'm pregnant and I'm keeping the baby. Like the parent's reaction, like, like, yeah, sure. You know, she needed that unplanned pregnancy for her personal sanctification and the dad did right. But like these parents, it was so evident that they needed it for their personal sanctification because all that was on their mind at the very beginning, or, or at least like the mom's mind. Um, it was so great because it was like such an honest human reaction, but they were like, so selfish about it. They were like, but but like we're empty nesters and like our daughter graduated college and we're, and we're done. And we don't like, no, like what about, I think she said something like, what about naked Saturdays? You know, like, my gosh, (laughs) (laughs) that's actually really funny. So funny. Right. And it was like, it was so, it was, it was very selfish. Um, it was also very human. Like it was such an honest reaction to it. Um, I thought it was beautiful. Um, but like, you know, it, things like that, things like unplanned pregnancies, like maybe it's you that need it. And also like all these other people in your life. Yeah. Need yeah. This sanctification that will come through this incident of, you know, right. Whatever, whatever it is, right. Not even unplanned pregnancies, but you know, yeah. it, you facing infertility, like maybe, and I feel like the majority of the people who listen to this podcast probably don't fall into that category because we talk about natural family planning for avoiding pregnancy a lot. But I know that there are some of you who do listen to this podcast who do face infertility. And, um, and I never want to negate that, uh, cross that you bear. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, you need that for your personal sanctification and for the sanctification of everyone else who comes into contact with you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. God will only like that word is true. God will only give me what I need 
for my personal sanctification, which means every single person I come into contact with, I need for my personal sanctification. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, wow. That was, I know it's, and you know what I do, I do want to make a little caveat, um, regarding like, you know, saying like unplanned pregnancies and, and premarital ones and all that kind of stuff. And just say that, like, obviously that doesn't mean that, right. Like we can justify like the premarital act, right? Like, oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, Let's just like get that you now. So don't at me on it. Right. Don't at me on it. But obviously it does not justify the premarital act, but given that that was chosen with free will, God can redeem us even through our sin. Right. Mm-hmm. So, right. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just throw it out there. So no one, <laughs> you know, and something else that I think is really important to touch on is that, um, we are not supposed to test God. Mm-hmm. So you're, I, I completely and, and totally agree with your phrase that you often say of, uh, sometimes your marriage needs intimacy more than it needs, um, more than you need, more than you need to not get pregnant. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that we should just abandon it all to chance and say, Oh, God's going to just provide because that is testing God. Mm -hmm. And yes, yes, God will provide, but he gave us reason and will our reason and will must exert control over our, um, desires. Yeah. That's from humana vitae y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all. And I, now I, I do think that there are some families that are probably called to, um, like a sort of providentialism in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's something that needs to be very seriously discerned. Right. Right. Um, and you know what yeah. I, Christopher West recently in his podcast with his wife recently, like brought up this whole like providential ism. And he's like, whenever we add an ism to things, we fall into kind of a, um, it trying to compete with Catholicism. These aren't exactly Mm. his words, but this is what I got out of what he was saying. And so, um, yes, we should always rely on God's providence. Yeah. But when we say, oh, I follow providentialism, suddenly we have like sected out part of Catholicism and said, oh, I'm better than you because I'm in this like providentialism camp, right? So this is the same thing for things like Manichaeism, which is Mm -hmm. a heresy, Jansenism, um, you know, these, these isms that just have a tendency to turn toward heretical values right? because you start putting this ism as like up on a pedestal higher right. than the, the only ism, which is Catholicism. <laughs> this is interesting. I'm like, I'm like unpacking this as I'm saying. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's really interesting. Um, but, but yeah, you know, so, we, so we have to be okay. really careful. Yeah. Um, is really what I'm saying is is understanding that um yes, yes, absolutely, God will provide for us. He will only give us what we need for our personal sanctification. These are these are fundamental truths of our humanity. Yeah. Not even of our Catholic faith, like of of the fact that we are human and we are created in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At the same time, I mean, it is, it, it is stated so, um, just like explicitly in the Bible that you cannot test the Lord. You shall mm-hmm. not. Right. I guess you technically can, but you shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't <laughs> wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> wouldn't recommend it. Right. And like, um, you know, d- yeah, Jesus is with, is with Satan and Satan's like, look, like if you throw yourself off this tower, God's going to protect you. And Jesus says, you, sh- you shall not test the Lord. If Jesus had jumped off that tower, God would have protected him. Mm -hmm. He absolutely would have. Yeah. But Jesus knew better. You, you shall not test the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. It's all very interesting. And honestly, I think that, um, like main point here is that marriage being ordered 
you know, naturally ordered towards, you know, the good of procreation can be a scary thing to kind of sign up for. Yes. Right. But, um, but that we can do it. I mean, because we have our faith and, and the church and canon law and all these things that we can sort of look into, um, we can really have trust that no matter, you know, what God might give us in that call towards procreation, right. Whether he calls us to procreate human life or to procreate love or service in some other type of way with our marriage, um, that we can just trust that we are being sanctified through it all. Um, mm, you know, mm-hmm. when I was same, same, right. Like trip to adoration. Um, and, and it was a good trip to adoration. It was, it was pretty deep. And it was one I really needed because it was my first time going since having Josephine. And it was just like, I just needed Michael, like kept the baby at home. And it was just like me and Jesus and, you know, just kind of reflecting on a lot that's happened <laughs> over the summer and yeah. the last few months. Um, but I started thinking that it would really stink, right? If I got to the end of my life and I was like, you know what? One more kid would not have killed me, right? Like yeah. if I got to the end of my life and how big of a deal it would feel right now if I got pregnant, right? And how little of a thing it's going to seem when I'm on my deathbed. Um, and let's talk and about how, the fact and that not like, even little, it wouldn't even be little, but it would be a joy to think back on, on my deathbed. It mm-hmm. would feel like torturous to me now, but in the future, it would have brought so much joy, you know? And, and to think that like, but those, that time that I struggled through having kids really close together or something, which again is not happening right now. Like praise God, <laughs> but you know, you it, don't, you don't know, right? <laughs> but this is me reflecting on like, okay, here I am back in, you know, not cycling yet. And you know, kind of where all the confusion of charting and all this kind of stuff. And how do I keep myself from getting really anxious over it? It was this, this point that, yeah, it, I can, I can have the faith that man, that time I may have really struggled back then it's going to do so much good for me now as I prepare to enter eternal life. Mm. Ooh, yeah, that's good. ideally right. You know what this made me think of? Um, we should wrap up pretty soon here, but yeah. God gives us humans reason and will, and he gives us these physical signs of what is happening inside of the female body that Mm -hmm. we can chart and track. And so we can use our reason and will to exert control over our desire to have intercourse with our spouse when we're like, "Mm, probably shouldn't get pregnant right now. Right. Mm -hmm. But it is not perfect. Yeah. And no method of family planning is perfect. True. Like even contraception. Mm -hmm. all of it has a quote failure rate, which I think is actually God just saying, I'm going to just slide in control. Just don't forget that. We are not (laughs) in control. Reason and will are different than control, right? We are using our reason and our will to exert control over our own body, right? But that doesn't mean we have control over the entire situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we are not called to have control over anything other than our own body and self and, you know, urges and desires and things like that. Like we are called to have self-control. Yeah. But we're not called to any other kind of control. Right. Amen. Yeah. Quite the opposite in fact. Yeah. Right. (laughs) We are called to relinquish control and Mm -hmm. as a control freak, it's really hard. Right. So like (laughs) self-proclaimed control freak here. It's just making me think to like those people who are like, Oh, NFP doesn't work. Like I have like six children or whatever. It's it's not about working. It's not about it working or not. Fertility awareness is about working. Like you were aware of your fertility, but like God also said, no, this is what you need. Yeah. 
like there's I'm not going to name names here, but there there is a mm, relatively, I don't know, kind of like CB list Catholic celebrity out there. Um, mm-hmm. Not like super well known, but anyway, I'm not going to name names. But she um, I was following her podcast for a long time, a couple of years ago. And she had like baby, 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 like four in a row. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think, I think it was like, that was, that was like five, six, seven, and eight kids. And she was just, I mean, like following her, her podcast was just like her going in and out of depressive episodes Mm. um, because of, you know, baby, 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 right? Right, right, right. Now, a couple of years out from that, she is killing it. Yeah. Because she needed that personal sanctification of those children. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and so like, and, and there's a million stories like this of sure. people who had unplanned pregnancies or, you know, NFP surprises or whatever you want to call it, that those babies led them to where they are right now. Yeah. And they're doing amazing things. Yeah. Amen. I think it is. Um, yeah, we can never see the, we can never see the full picture. And yeah. like, I think if there's one thing that I really wish people would understand about, um, about the church's teaching of NFP and like how to practice NFP is that discernment is like, it, it cannot be taken out of it. Mm-hmm. Like discernment is a constant, constant piece of it. Um, you know, fertility awareness plus discernment. That's like what it is. Um, and you know, yeah. And we can't ever see the full big picture and it's not always going to go our way. Right. Um, you know, but there is hope in the fact that it hasn't gone our way. Right. Like we can just trust that that's because that's where God is calling us. That's what he needs us to do in order for us to eventually get to heaven basically, which is like a big deal. Um, right. That is a big deal. I think we don't, we do not put enough emphasis on that. We don't No, No, It's honestly what saves me the most. It's in, in my struggles with NFP and my fears of getting pregnant at certain times and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like that is what saves me the most is that thought to the future, Mm -hmm. right? Like it's hard right now. And you know, it's not to say like, okay, you know, like, like I, I do need a break for my mental health. Right. And that's, that's valid. And mm-hmm. I'm allowed to have that. Right. Um, but at the same time, like whatever God might send my way, um, I can just trust and have faith that, that it, he's sending it to me because that's what I need. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, it's, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Even though it's hard. It's it's hard. hard. It's hard, but it's all good. I think that's a great place to wrap up. Amen. All right. If you are not following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at charting toward intimacy. Um, If you have topics you want us to talk about, um, questions, comments, concerns, um, please reach out to me. I love to hear from you guys on Instagram or email. Links to those are in the show notes. Until next time. See you guys.